that magical season for the Bolts has ended as the Chargers fall to the Patriots and hope they can do it again next season. Their win is Sunday an example of just sometimes the adversity you need to go through in an effort to get to the ultimate prize down the line? I, I feel like it is. I feel like it is. I feel like we have a young team around here, and I feel like it's only the beginning. When you get away from this game a little bit, and I hope you guys get away, now I think you'll look back and you can appreciate the season that we had. We definitely got something to prove, man. It's a world, you know? So many people have doubted us for so long. I think competition, that's something that you can't coach. We're always looking for competition. The draft is our lifeblood. A lot of information will come from this combine. Being able to talk to people and investigate these players is the most important thing. This job is a detailed job, and it's extra effort. You know, I was always more concerned with the back of a football car than I was with the front. He was a very good athlete who had to learn how to be a football player, but he had the speed that was just unique. I always knew I wanted to play in the NFL. I was the NFL was the main goal, it's the ultimate goal. My identity. It's pretty much heavily centered on coming from Notre Dame. Ah, uh, man, I, I really can't explain how I feel right now. Like, I just made it official. But when you know, you just know. And I just knew that this is a Super Bowl caliber team, and I just want to add to that. Draft day, and just in general, has been, since I was a kid, my favorite day of the year. The Los Angeles Chargers select Jerry Tillery. I, I'm excited to get in and learn. I give our scouts credit. They, they, they saw him, they liked him. I'm looking forward to having this young man on our squad. I think he has a lot of upside. Last year's over. We're going to win and lose what we got right here. And our goal starts with one in the West. We only got one goal. That's to get the ring, baby. Let's go. We had 21 of 28 from last year's squad re-audition, 22 of which we did not advance into finals. And did you yeah. say aloud we're looking for a squad of 24? We are looking for a squad of 24. Last year was 28. Is this everybody? Yeah? You guys, let's circle up. Uh, we just wanted to take a minute to chat with you guys. Let's pull it in nice and tight before you get too hot and sweaty. <laughs> We just want to thank all of you for your hard work this week. We know that we have thrown a lot at you. We have incorporated quite a bit of change throughout this auditions process in an effort to put together the best possible team that we can to represent the club this year. So we thank you for your flexibility. We thank you for your dedication. So many of us in this room dreamt of being here tonight, many years ago. You deserve to be here, you have a space in this room, and we support you and are so excited to watch you audition. So make sure to channel that energy and all of that hard work and continue to reach for your dream tonight. It's really special just to be a part of their journey. They have been working at this for a really long time, and this is really a dream come true. So it's a pretty spectacular night for all of us. Congratulations to number 433, Kaylin. When my number was called, I just didn't know what to do, and I was like, oh my gosh, like that's really me, that's my number. Number 394, Kenya. I was shocked, excited, and just, you know, pumped to be a part of the squad and team. Tonight was a really special night for these ladies because tonight was the night that their dreams came true. Charger girls on three, one, two, three. Charger girls, woo! While the future is now for the 24 newest members of the Charger Girls, across town, All-Pro Safety Derwin James got a sneak peek of his future and the chance to meet the men and women responsible for building the Chargers' new L.A. Stadium home come 2020. I'll get me geared up, man. I bet this had a... It's adjustable. Okay. I got a new job, y'all. Joining over to the construction team. Derwin James out here, baby. 
You already know we represent. I'm about to preview our future home. Hey, so like, you gotta have like crane license and stuff to drive all those stuff? Oh yeah, oh yeah. How long they take to build like that? Took us three months to put them together. It uh, came in 278 flatbed trailers. Whoa. Yeah. Stadium look crazy, I ain't gonna even lie to you. It look, it look amazing. Let me show y'all. South end zone. I look behind me, man. This is where we're gonna come out at. This is gonna be the locker room. I know it's hard for y'all to see. It yeah. builds into a lightning bolt that's into the ceiling. Gonna be a big boat up here. See, see like. But it's crazy though. We're gonna be able to come out through the 30 yard line. It's dope, it's really dope. Man, yeah, man, I see myself making a lot of plays out here. You can see the whole thing. You can bro. see the whole thing here. Oh, you gotta give me a picture, bro. This is insane, bro. I get it, I get it, I get it. This is the real nosebleed. No, actually, it's not. I think get a little higher up there, but. Picture, yeah, man, come on, man. Yeah. Got you, man. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate right, it. Man. I see. Man, it's very impressive, and um, I just give credit to the people that's working hard on it. They're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. Out. yeah no problem. I can't wait. I wish we suited up tomorrow, honestly. Get out here and ball. How we doing? Good. Did you playing this last year? I didn't. Uh, last year I came in late. I came, came in, in mid, mid year, right? week yeah. six. Okay. Cleveland. That was no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's Hit them straight today. Kickers make the best golfers, right? I hope I'm decent enough today. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, cool. <laughs> hey, you got to open up your golf mind. That's, That's it. Key, right? Just yeah, have fun yeah, with it. That's the know, best time. Learn things, yeah. <laughs> but there's some fun putts out there. You'll have a good time. That's awesome. Hey, appreciate it. All right, we're rolling. How far are we looking? Uh, 167 flag, a little crosswind. So what do you think, pitching wedge? Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. yep. That's it right there, baby. There he is. Wow. 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 We're back. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Easy money. Since joining the Chargers in week six of the 2018 season, kicker Michael Badgley has quickly become a fan favorite. A multi sport athlete in high school, the man teammates affectionately call Money Badger has thrived in one of the game's most pressure-packed positions, which translates well to the game of golf. I've been playing golf since I was probably five years old. I used to take little lessons in Summit, New Jersey, and then we'd go up to Vermont as a family, and my grandfather would take us out, grandmother would take us out, my, my brother and I, that's where we kind of learned how to play. You enjoying it out here? Love it so far. Got lucky, got the uh, call for a workout here week six, right before Cleveland and uh, just stuck it out. I guess they liked me enough to keep Snatches me around. Don't, like, don't give it up. That's it, oh, yeah. Don't give it back. Going into certain situations, you know, whether it's you're going on 18 and you need to make a birdie, or if you're going in for a game-winning kick, it's the same type of edge. Just go out there and bury it. And in terms of taking out different clubs and kind of figuring out where you are in distances, kick off, take the driver out, short shot, Take the sand wedge out and mid-range take out the seven iron. Why not? But it's all going to be the same stroke. So a lot of a lot of similarities between golf and kicking, which is why I love it. We'll take the bird there. Moving up. Right now we are live at the Chargers Golf Tournament. Matt Smith, the voice of the Bolts, is excited because he always talks about this kicker. Love this guy. How he's good looking. How he's strong. What did you boot against the Bengals? 59 yarder? I think it was something like that. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like that for the freaking win. <laughs> he is the Chargers kicker out of where? The U. Damn right. That's why he's got say. the swagger. Just talk about uh, this team dynamic. Uh, is it different from uh, other teams that you've been on? Uh, being the kicker is always, you know, a little bit different, obviously. But uh, but what is this team like? I, you know, I think going into this year specifically, it's exciting. We got a lot of the same guys coming back. Uh, a lot of the same guys on the coaching staff, and we add people here and there. You get a couple nice draft picks, and it's just one of those locker rooms where everybody's together. And I think that's kind of where it starts, especially in this, this OTA phase and 
uh, going into mini camp. It's you know everyone just getting back together, getting excited about everything, and learning the things, getting quick, and um, it's it's exciting going back into the season. We're <laughs> we're going to be rolling. It's going to be great. It was a surreal feeling when my agent told me, "Hey, you're going to work out for the Chargers," because I knew it was an opportunity, and I knew going into it that there was going to be other competition, obviously, but I wasn't going to let this one go. Uh, so it was a situation where I was I was ready for it. So so it was it was exciting. You know, I feel like at this position, a lot of people think that oh, you just got to kick the ball, but you know, I, I passionately I, I love sports. I love football. Um, you got to know the game, and I just the kind of guy, the kind of player I want to be is just someone people can count on, and I think that's pretty big at this position. So that's that's what I look for. Hey, I want to try. Can you do this? Let's go. Do it, do it, do it. This is a 59 yard field goal attempt. If successful, it would represent a Chargers record. The Chargers to hold. Badgley with the kick. It is up, and it is good! Michael Badgley from 59 yards with a fist pump. It was just one of those perfect situations where no time left, perfect snap, perfect hold, and it was awesome. Undrafted out of the University of Miami a year ago, Badgley was signed and later released by the Indianapolis Colts before getting a tryout with the Chargers. Even after a successful rookie campaign, he knows life as an NFL player, and especially that of a kicker, he's fickle. In a league where you're only as good as your last play, minicamp in June and training camp later this summer are an important time to not only work on your craft, but to show you belong. You know, goals for a mini camp, and I think for everyone, is just to kind of, you know, go out there and, and, and get back into it. You know, have football. You had all OTAs and working out and everything. Uh, but for me personally, uh, mini camp's a time where you get to see the snap and the hold and the kick. Uh, you know, right before we leave for a big break. So it's an opportunity to just be with those guys right before we leave, and then make sure we do well there so we can hit the ground running once training camp comes. But if it's a Wednesday, we must be in Costa Mesa. We are with the Chargers today. It is a home game for our NFL Network crew with a 12 and 4 team that won a playoff game a year ago and is now trying to stay healthy and find a way to take that next step or even more than that next step. The last chapter in the offseason program is veteran minicamp, a three-day tune-up before training camp for a team with lofty expectations heading into the 2019 season. Let's get better, let's go, let's go, let's get better, let's get better, let's get better. Full speed, let's go. And no walking, why we walk? Let's go. No walking, let's go. Go, 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 go. Are we good? You good on that communication right there? Oh, anytime I can have the whole entire team here, I'm excited about that. And then we'll talk about uh, uh, alignments, assignments, adjustments, those type of things right now are invaluable. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, full speed. Come on, full speed, full speed. Let's go. Pick, the, pick it up, full speed over here, full speed. I'm looking for guys to come out of this, this camp before they go into regular training camp, at least with those three things down. And that way we can move on to the more situational football and technique and fundamentals. Coach, what was the message to this team last year? You leave the field in New England and then to launch this off season. This is a playoff team. This is a 12 win team. You are right there to be in a championship team. What's the message to the team to get to that point? Just get better each and every day. That's all we can control is getting better each and every day and being at our best. And you know, if we just focus on that, then I think we have a chance. After 12 wins and a wild card playoff victory in 2018, the Chargers are looking to take the next step. Standing in their way, the Kansas City Chiefs. With a high-powered offense and the NFL's reigning MVP, the Bolts know they have their work cut out for them. It's a challenge, however, they accept head on thanks in large part to a talented secondary that is led by coach Ron Miles. Here we go, good. Here we go. Two times. Uh -uh. I remember about Ron was I was a player in Denver. Coach Shanahan was so impressed with Ron that uh, he didn't give him the quality control job. He made him the DB coach right away. He was that impressive. 
Hey, let's have a day now, man. Let's have a day. Let's have a day. Let's have a day. Let's have a day. Great day today, man. Let's go. Here we go. Set. Go. Tip. Here we go. Good. Set. Go. Hey, the DBs look good. Here we go. Come on. Guy in behind, don't be surprised. Guy in behind, don't be surprised. Nice. All right. Here we go. Pop. Ha. Two scooches. Ah, wait for me now. Wait for me now, 23. Wait for me. Ha. 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 Ron's ability to, uh, to articulate what he's trying to communicate and to teach and his knowledge of the game, it's off the charts. Cash, man. He caught that thing, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All about the ball team, huh? Hey, nickel, nickel. 11, 11, 11, 11. Oh, we got it. Go get that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Hey. Hey. That's <laughs> he is heck of a football coach. He always has been. And so I've known him all of my professional life and, and coaching life. So um, when I got here, it was a no-brainer, you know, that he wasn't going anywhere. The job of an NFL coach, nah, really, you're, there are no hours. There's not a nine to five. So you go until you get the job done. And sometimes getting that job done uh, means you bring it home. I'm looking to see if, uh, are their alignments uh, correct? Are they using a hand signal? Are, there, are their knees bent? And we, we had an opportunity to go make a play. And Rayshon Jenkins, he's able to throw his hands at the ball and make a play that could be a game changer if this was a real game. As you watch this play, you can see the whole sideline erupts. Uh, and comes off the sideline uh, with that energy. And I think that that's what our players um, have done here, at least the last uh, you know, six years that I've been here. Uh, that group, if, as they go, the rest of us go. There's a quiet confidence and swagger to Ron Miles' group that permeates the entire roster. Casey Hayward, Derwin James, Desmond King, and Adrian Phillips are among the leaders of a group of men who have become known quite simply as the Jack Boys, a name befitting of a group known for giving NFL offenses fits and creating turnovers. It was Adrian McDonald who was here with us a couple years ago, who's now coaching at uh, Texas State, I believe, uh, as a secondary coach, but he, he was the guy that kind of came up with the name and coined the phrase Jack Boys, and the rest of our guys have kind of, you know what, I like that. And from that point on, they even got hats that say Jack Boys. Um, so they've kind of taken it and, and run with it. Um, they are, how they would say it, they are thieves. They're trying to get the football. And at the end of the day, that's what this job is all about, being in the secondary, is that we're trying to get the ball back for our offense. And they've done a good job of that. We grew up on the same street mm -hmm. um, in Tacoma, Washington. We went to junior high school together. Mm -hmm. And we went out for a little bit in junior high school, but it wasn't anything Other than nothing, nothing serious. serious. And we didn't get, actually get back together until our senior year of high school in 82. And then we've been together ever since. Oh, yeah. We so, got married in 86. The funny thing is that I had I gone to the elementary school in my neighborhood, I probably would have known her since kindergarten. Uh, yeah. Uh, my mother's name is Sandra, or, and my wife's name is Sandra. And we happen to be sitting, living on the same street, uh, East 62nd in Tacoma, Washington. And so I tell people all the time, Sandra, was, we were meant to be. Mm -hmm. uh, this, was, this was already planned out years and years ago. We just didn't know it. And, uh, you know, summertime, we get a chance to do a little bit more. And I get a chance to spend some time with my wife. Um, in, in a different setting. And a lot of times she's, she may be doing something, um, watching TV, and I might even be back here doing some work, but it, we're still together. So I, I, I do cherish those times when we, uh, we have these opportunities. Uh, at the end of the day, anytime I'm home with my wife, and, and it's always good.
This is our wedding day. Uh, this is uh, going on 33 years ago. This is a picture of our Sandra and I and our wedding party. Uh, this was June 28th, 1986, uh, the day we, uh, we got married. The minister that officiated, he was sick, and so we didn't really say hardly any vows. So I don't know uh, if we're officially married. Right, I'm playing, right, I'm right. Um, yeah, I mean, it was like a five-second ceremony, really. It was, so yeah, but it was it was a great day, though, for us. Oh, it yeah. It was the beginning. Oh, yeah, a lot of family and friends. So we uh, we celebrated later on at the reception, and it was, a, it was a good time. And again, it's hard to believe that was 33 years ago. While a lot can change in 33 years, one constant that never will is the care Milas has for his players. The kind of coach I am, I think I'm fair but firm. He's a perfectionist, I think. Um, he likes to remind you of the <laughs> same thing over and over again because sometimes he says they don't really get it all the time. You, they know I have their best, uh, at their best uh, interests at heart and uh, I care about them. And I think that's what's most important. They want to know that you care about them and can you help them? And my job as a coach is to try to help them. All right, DBs, DBs. A lot of good things. But here, what's, what do you have to do, though, Ray? If you're in the end zone, make sure you bring the ball to the where? To the sideline. To the sideline. Oh, uh, yep, and then break, <laughs> crib it, all that kind of stuff. But bring it to the sideline. Do not turn that ball. Do not give it back to the, uh, to the other team. Yay? Yeah, for real. All right. Everybody up here, everybody up here. In front, in front, in front. All right, let's take, let's take a knee. Let's take a knee. I thought, that was, I thought that was a damn good count, that mini count right there, fellas. The effort was good. I thought we got better, especially a lot of you young players. You're stepping up. You're playing faster. When you, when you know what you're doing, you can play faster. You can make plays. Enjoy your break. Take care of one another. I only got one rule over the break. And you know what that one rule is, right? Protect the team. This segment of Backstage Chargers is brought to you by Ticketmaster. Coming up on a new season of Backstage Chargers, presented by Toyota, Thomas Davis returns home to Charlotte to ready himself for a new journey, and the Bolts head to training camp with one goal in 2019, a Super Bowl championship. 